Greetings, God bless you, and welcome to the historic West Durham Baptist Church located here at 1901 Athens Avenue in the beautiful city of Durham, North Carolina. We are in unprecedented times. We've already made this recording about two years ago to welcome you to an online format of our worship. And well, we're back at it again. Unapologetically, we are bringing worship to you. We're grateful to God that in this season that God has blessed us here at West Durham with the technology and the personnel and ministry leaders who have sacrificed time and their gifts so that we can collectively come and worship God in spirit and in truth. Remember to join us, to meet us every Sunday at 10 a.m. on our website and on our social media outlets. You'll see them on the screen after this. And remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so thank you for your continued and consistent giving. Thank you to our members who have been consistent in your tithes and in your, and in your offerings. And to all of you, our family and friends across this country, we are grateful to God that you have partnered with us so that we can continue to bring you ministry in a spirit of excellence. We don't know how long we're going to be in this phase, but know that whenever we gather, we are going to bring you the best we have. We're going to give God the best we have. Remember on your social media outlets, remember on Facebook, on Instagram, remember to follow us and to share each week. We invite you as you log in on Sunday morning to comment, to join us, type in your worship, type in your messages to each other. That helps our fellowship and that lifts up the name of Jesus. Again, we don't know the, how long we shall be in this space, but as you hear at West Durham, as we say here at West Durham, until we gather again, God be with you. journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me with my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Arabic, in uh, uh, Americ, Saul, Saul, 
Why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the gore. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you and appoint you as a servant and as a witness to what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The word of God for the people of God. And we all say, Thank you. Come on, put your hands together. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, say something to him. We worship you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Oh, come on, let's sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Together, say, we prize you. We prize you. 
come on, if you know he's worthy to be praised, come on, even at home, give him a high praise. For hallelujah is the highest praise. It's even in the song that God is worthy to be praised. In the city of our God, I hope you were blessed already uh, by this worship experience. Our praise team, our quarantine, as we call them, has lifted this song of high praise, and we give God praise for that. Come on, even in Rome, won't you clap your hands and tell God thank you at home. Give God praise because he is just that. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you so much, Elder uh, uh, Tony Kane, one of our associate ministers who has led us thus far. There is a word from the Lord. We see this key verse as lifted now on our screens. Uh, Acts 26 and verse 16. Now get up and stand on your feet. Jesus is speaking now, of course, to Saul. Um, I have appeared to you and appoint you as a servant and as a witness. Come on at home, all. somebody say witness and hear witness of what you have seen and will see of me. The word of God for the people of God, we say thanks be to God. We want to lift this thought uh, for your hearing on this morning, a witness worth watching. A witness worth watching. If we were in church, I would tell you to tell your neighbor, I would ask your neighbor, are you a witness worth watching? Amen. Uh, but just text it to somebody. Praise God. They'll get it. Are you a witness worth watching? Shall we pause and pray together? Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for this atmosphere of worship, God. Our praise team has, they've done their job. They've set the atmosphere for preaching and, and for the preparation of the release of your word through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, God, I pray that you would now bless this, your preacher. Give me uh, now a, a release as you have spoken to me in private. God, now allow that private conversation to be a public manifestation of your glory and the help for the listener. Turpentine now, these lips of clay, preach me Holy Ghost like never before. I pray now in the strong name of Jesus who is the Christ and all believing together say amen and amen. A witness worth watching. Well, uh, I've stated before, um, while at Virginia Union, I've actually told this story before, not the story, but uh, I reflected on this thought of being in chapel um, there um, on the hallowed grounds of Virginia Union, uh, leaving New Jersey, graduating Orange High School, 1997, starting my undergraduate work in religious studies, minor in music instrumental concentration in organ performance as my minor. And there I would accompany um, chapel services weekly um, uh, in, or in between the weeks when the university choir was not singing. And during that time, uh, we had a university chaplain. Um, was not the most exciting in terms of preaching, but he was a pastoral figure. Uh, he would uh, give his sermons. And there with freshmen, sophomore, uh, junior, seniors, super seniors, super duper seniors, and, <laughs> and those just trying to get out, right? Uh, 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 we would hear him uh, encourage us um, uh, in, in the faith. But at the end of every chapel service, he ended by saying the same words, same monotone voice. And remember, somebody's watching you. It was almost a thread, like, you know, <laughs> all these college students, you know, away from home, doing whatever they feel like doing, hanging out, how they feel like hanging out, getting away, watch this, from what they know is a right way of living, as they were taught, many of them, most of them, coming from uh, homes that had values, but not all, right? And, and so there he reminded them of a presence that, that, that they did not see, that they could not understand that in preparing to be something for their families and hopefully for themselves, that they were no longer under, under the watchful gaze of big mama and grandmama and, and daddy and uncle this and cousin so-and-so, but there was a community at Virginia Union, there was a community that was watching them. But there were also folk, watch this Isaiah, by virtue of them being in a place to prepare themselves to be leaders while already watching their, their leadership. 
They were already watching what they said versus what they did. And so here was the chaplain reminding these students, of all majors, all hues, who had to take chapel for credit to graduate, that there was somebody that had their eyes, somebody's watching you. Well, I started that because what, what better way to start this message with reminding us that somebody is watching you. Somebody's watching what you say. They're watching whether or not your yay is going to be yay and your nay is going to be nay. They're watching whether or not you are, as I preached years ago, a quarter Christian. What is a quarter Christian? It is uh, not 25% like a five center, but a quarter, which has a head and a tail. And, you know, some folk are quarter Christian. You flip a coin and see what you get. And they <laughs> sometimes they save, sometimes they not. Sometimes they got the Holy Ghost, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they feel like praying, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they feel like a nut. Wait, I'm sorry, that's a commercial. Come on sometime. Amen. Listen, and, and, and here it is. You ought not be a quarter Christian. You ought not be to where you're one way in church and another way at home. One way, come on somebody, at, 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 at here at West Durham and somebody else at Target. You ought to be the same way because what? Somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching what you say and what you do. They're watching this word called your witness. The actions attached to your lifestyle. The actions attached to who and what you say you are. I like how Max Lucado said it. To call yourself a child of God is one thing. To be called a child of God by those who watch your life is another thing altogether. I, I, I done lost this room in here today. It's one thing, Brother Jeff, for you to stand up and say, I'm a Christian, but it's something totally different when some Somebody else sees your living and says, they've got what I need. They're living a life that is in line with the scripture and the God they say they believe in. Well, you may not believe me, uh, but there are different types of witnesses, even biblically. We have different uh, uh, Greek words that, that, that show us what a witness looks like in, in action and in deed. That's where we get that word in, in, like to do, deed to do, right? In what you do, in deed, right? In dido is actually the root of that. And so here it is for at least four types of biblical witnesses, the talking, lilene, uh, of the preaching. Kerosene, not kerosene, but uh, kerosene, and prophesying, and I'm going to break these down a little, little bit, and, and teaching, uh, didaskine. And watch this, it is the talking, those who in their witness can share with you what God has done. They're talking, they're saying, I need you to know. And listen, sometimes our witness is not about what we do in church, but it's about how you have a conversation on the street. Come on, somebody. It's not always about the preaching and the hooping and the, and the hollering associated with inside worship, but sometimes it is when you're on your block and somebody has not been given a kind word yet, and they say hello, and your regular talk is a witness to who and what you say you are. You ought to talk the talk. Come on, somebody. And then, yes, there is this kerosene, this preaching, and I and when I when I was studying, I love this Greek because it really did make me think about kerosene, right? Something that ignites something. Come on, somebody. That sets fire, that gives fuel with oxygen, that sets ablaze. And yes, there ought to be fire. There ought to be some passion with proclamation because that's what preaching is. Preaching is proclamation. We're going to get to what teaching is. But preaching says this is what God says and what God is doing. Then you have the witness of prophesying, not prophet lying, not <laughs> profiting off of lies, not profiting, come on, somebody off of things, amen, because I ain't going to spit on nobody and rub it in nobody's face, not trying to get, amen, hits and watches, amen, that's called sensationalism. I can't hear nobody pray because the gospel, I need somebody to help me right here, stands by itself. We don't have to have tricks. We don't have to have gimmicks. You've just got to have the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and the 
second coming of the Lord Jesus, and that's preaching all by itself. Prophesying, though, says, watch this, literally, it is the voice piece of God, one who speaks on God's behalf. It is the mouth, the oracle of God. And see, we always want somebody to be a prophet these days that want to tell somebody what you're going to get. But all the prophets in the Bible always came with correction before they came with words of blessing. I can't hear nobody pray. There was always a word that said, get your house together. Get yourself together. Repent. Come on, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The best summation of that in the total uh, uh, canon of the Holy Word is found in this one saying, if my people, this is prophecy, y'all, who are called by my name, parenthetical means if you do what you say you do, then you can get what you want to get. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, somebody say then, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal the land. Prophesying is not about telling you what you want and about what you want to have and what you want to get. What does it look like? I'm telling you money's coming and you ain't tithing. Come on somebody, what does it look like I'm telling you that God's going to do it for you and you don't even trust God to do it for yourself. You got to believe the, your, the report of the Lord yourself. That's prophesying. There is a witness that was used through the prophets of old that pointed to the Savior that would come and then there's teaching. Yes, preaching is proclamation. The talking is how we relate to one another. Prophesying is the oracle of God speaking literally on God's behalf or as a mouthpiece of God. But this teaching, this conversation, it is where we get didactic from. This word, Greek word didactic, which means a conversation, a back and forth. And that's really the type of preaching I like is didactic preaching. Well, hallelujah, I can go back and forth just a little while. We can unpack what the text says. And I hope we're trying to do that right now. Because what is going on is a teaching moment for Saul. What is going on is a lesson for somebody that's riding a high horse. What is happening in this lesson is somebody that's had the, the learning but ain't had the burning. What is happening in this text is somebody that has everything they want and still is missing everything they need. But I would uh, caution you, uh, don't you trot too high on your high horse uh, because this shows us that God has a way uh, of humbling those who are not willing to humble themselves. I can't hear nobody pray. God has a way uh, of making us pause and say, God help me and give me what I need. I know I'm in the text. Here is Saul on this Damascus road. Here is Saul doing what he normally does, going this route and there came a light from the heaven. Come on, y'all. He fell off a high horse. Now here he is laying there. He hears a, a voice from up above him and he's like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? And here now comes a voice, the voice of the ascended Savior that says, Saul, a Saul, what you doing? <laughs> Come on, somebody. What are you talking about? Who are you? I'm the one that you've been trashing. I'm the one that you have been talking against. I'm the one that you, oh my God, have been fighting against. I am Jesus. And Jesus has a talk with Saul. Jesus begins to speak to him as he's laid out, having been sucker punched by the divine, laid out. And here is the help that, listen, when God moves us from a high place. It is not to humiliate us, but it's to elevate us to a higher place. I can't hear nobody pray. When God puts us as a place where we have to sit back and sit down and yield ourselves to the will and word of God, it is because God is putting us in a place and a position where we can be used for his glory. I tried to tell y'all earlier because somebody's watching you. Come on, somebody's been feeling estranged from God, struggling with where you've been, seeming as if you've lost more than you've gained. But I come to tell you, it is God in the midst of it that's been setting you up so that somebody can watch and see beyond your talk and see beyond the sermons and see beyond what you prophesy, see even beyond your lesson to what you've learned from the teaching, to what you've experienced from 
from the prophetic to what you have gleaned from the preaching and what you know about the talking. I can't hear nobody praying here. And that's why grandmama and them said it like this. Y'all can say what you will, make it sound good and nice, but you can't make me doubt them because I know too much. You can't, come on somebody, you can't turn me around. You can't shake me. You can't rattle me because I've experienced them for myself. And when God has laid you out, God has laid you out to lift you up. I know I'm in the text. God didn't let him stay there long. God didn't have him there so people can walk by and ride by and point. But God said, I'm taking you down so I can lift you up. I'm putting you in a place so that you can be a light shining on a hill because somebody's watching you. And he's saying to Saul, I need you to know that I'm positioning you, watch this, to be a witness worth watching. <laughs> oh, somebody missed a shouting point because there's a lot of people, Brother Will, that's talking witnesses of Jesus, but really they don't know him for themselves. Millions of people, tens of millions in America claim Christianity, but when their backs are against the wall, come on somebody, God should have already heard their name and voice before the trial and tribulation happens. God is not a genie that just shows up when death comes and sickness comes, but you ought to have already had a talking relationship with God so much so that he knows your voice. Matter of fact, I'm going to go deeper. You ought to talk with God long enough that God knows your snore. Y'all just missed that. I mean, you, you ought to know that God knows. Come on, somebody, that when you lay down at night uh, and you've been praying for your family and you made a, a, a pillow through your tears that God knows the pain and the suffering that you've been through. Uh, and grandmama said it. Y'all, I like my grandmama's theology. She said it like this, that in my worst times, I could have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about my struggles. He will hear my faintest cry and answer by and by our fields. Y'all got it. A little prayer will turning, and I'll know the fire's burning. Just a little talk with Jesus, it makes it right. And so here, there's a relevant question that's very simple. So how do you know you are a witness worth watching? Oh, he was knocked down, yes. But how do you know you're a witness worth watching? The first thing is already un uh, there on the screen. We know we are a witness worth watching when we are rescued from our own circumstances. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Listen, I'm afraid of any preacher that doesn't have their own testimony of what they're preaching about. I can't hit nobody. I get nervous. Come on, somebody. If, if you telling me that God is able, but you don't have any stock in God's ability yourself, uh, it makes me nervous. Come on, somebody. When somebody is telling you God's going to do this, but you never experienced the doonessness of God, uh, uh, the dunamis power of God. When you have been rescued from your own circumstances, I'm in the text. The Bible says it very clearly right there in that passage. He says, listen, I'm raising you up. So that you can go back and you can share with your people. I need y'all to see it. It's right there in the text. He says, I'm lifting you up so you can have a witness of what I've done in terms of your circumstances. You, we are rescued from wherever we are. God does not wait for us to clean up to get up. But while we are messed up, he cleans us from the inside out. Come on, somebody. And he rescues us from our own circumstances. He rescues us from the pitiable pits that we are in. He rescues us from the demented mindsets that are now prevalent in this culture and in this world. He rescues us from the racial and social ills and stigmas that we see moving higher and higher even in our political realm. He rescues us from not just from poverty, help me Holy Ghost, but from a mentality of poverty. And listen, this is what he was saying. Saul, I'm lifting you up so you can go back and lift somebody else up. You know you're a witness worth watching when you know you've been rescued from your own circumstance. circumstances. But secondly, you know you're a witness 
worth watching when you can say we receive new vision. When you know that God has given you new vision, help me Holy Ghost, you know you've got it. I like this text. It's already on the screen. Although my circumstances, and this was by a, a writer named Eric Thomas, was homelessness, he said my vision wasn't. you got to look this brother up. He was homeless and he heard, watch this, a preacher preach in his homelessness in his destitute place. He heard a preacher preach. Y'all ain't going to hear what I said. He heard the preacher. I know some of y'all still ain't trying to come to church, but he heard this preacher preach. He heard the preacher preach. He heard the word of God in his lowest place. And can I say any preachers listening, your preaching should not be based on the power, the authority of your preaching on who shouts, but who can get up. Come on, somebody. But it's not about who dances, but who can walk out the church with their head lifted up saying despite the hell I've got heaven that has already touched earth and so here it is he says although I was homeless that was my circumstance uh, listen although my circumstances was homelessness watch this I have a new vision we are recipients of new vision God says you got to know watch this you're a witness worth watching when your own eyes are open not when you trying to give somebody glass and you blind. Come on, somebody. But when you can say, listen, I couldn't see, but God opened my eyes. I wasn't going the right way, but I'm on the right road now. You know you're a witness worth watching when you can say, listen, I know I was seeing things wrong, but I thank God he took the scales off my eyes. Oh, I know y'all tired of my dead grandmama, but I'm going to call her one more time because she said it like this. I'm satisfied. I know y'all may not be satisfied. You ain't got a new house. You ain't got a new car. But grandmama in them down in Prospect, Virginia at Peaks Baptist Church would say, I'm satisfied. She would say, ever since I met the Lord, I've been satisfied. And they would sing, didn't have all this stuff. They had an upright piano, but they would get happy with hymnals in their hand and said, why? Because I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Ever since that wonderful day, my my soul's been satisfied. When you have been given new vision, you can give vision to somebody else. When God has opened your eyes, you can let somebody else see things clearly through the word of God. We know we are witnesses worth watching. Watch this when we then are redirected. I'm in the text. The Bible told him, said, now go and let them know that I'm the God that brought them from darkness. Darkness, I'm in the text, y'all, into the light and from Satan to God. It's all in the text. This is why Paul had to be knocked down so he could be lifted up, so he could go to where the people were and lift them up, so they in turn could go to places Paul would never go, so the places where Paul has never be, been can be lifted. Y'all don't know it, but that's your job, is to come to church, to get your praise on, but get some lifting. You can put in your coach bag with a K or with to see come on somebody real or not and then take it to work for somebody that ain't ever been to church and let them know there is no secret what my God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you with arms wide open he'll pardon you there is no secret what God can do he'll redirect you from a dark place to a lighthouse he'll bring you from where Satan has had you bound to where God has lifted you I need to pause right here and ask the question for those here present and those at home has God redirected your path has God turned you around the right way not 360 because that's turning around in a circle but a 180 degree turn has God turned you the right way well if God has redirected you I submit you're a witness worth watching yes you're a witness worth watching when we are when you know you've been rescued from your circumstances, when you receive new vision, when you are redirected. But lastly, and I bid you farewell, you are a witness worth watching when you have been released from the penalties of sin and separation from God. I know I'm in the text because the Bible says he told him, now go back. I've lifted you up. I'm going to take the scales off your eyes. You'll 
see again so that the people can now be reunited with the God they were estranged from. And that's what a witness ought to be about is being able to tell somebody listen I was the sinner that was near as hell but one day Jesus saved me <clears throat> One day I found him for myself. <clears throat> One day I met him on my Damascus road. Is there anybody in here <laughs> that can say I met the Lord myself? <laughs> Not from what other people have said, but I met the Lord on my own journey. And I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I wouldn't take anything for what I've gone through. Because I'm glad though I was separated from God. I was in a world of sin. I'm glad that Jesus, thank you sir, picked me up and turned me around. He then placed my feet on solid ground. When you've been released from the penalty of sin, that means that everything that was attached in your life, that was attached to the sin of your life, has now been forgiven. And the chasm between you and God has now come together. In other words, you can no longer just live the way you're living, but there is a change in your life. When God releases you from the penalty of sin, that mess that you were in no longer makes you a mess, but it makes you a messenger to be able to tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would already be dead, sleeping in my grave. But the God of all creation stepped right in and he stepped right in on the time. As I bid you farewell, I came to tell you that yes, somebody is watching you. But listen, while they're watching you, I dare you give them something to watch. Have I got a witness in here? I remember my mama telling us, well, if folk gonna talk about you, you ought to give them something to talk about. Well, if somebody's watching you, they ought to be able to watch the way you live your hands. They ought to be able to see you while other people are throwing Throwing in the towel, allow them to watch you tie a knot in your towel and hold on a little while longer because somebody's watching you while others go through trials and tribulations with bowed down heads. You ought to let your haters and your families, your supporters and your friends, allow them to watch you make the devil a liar and watch while others have bowed down heads, allow them to see what a lifted up head looks like and declare I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which come in my help. For all of my help comes from the Lord. Have I got a witness in here? Somebody ought to watch you. Give God praise in the midst of your circumstances. They ought to watch you live your hands. And even if you shed a tear, allow them to watch you with an invisible hand of God. For God said, I'll wipe every tear from your eyes. Have I got a witness in here? Can I go higher? And after a while, and by and by, you'll have this testimony. Yes, somebody may be watching me, but I thank God this is my testimony that I've got somebody that's watching out for me. Somebody ought to say yes. Y'all may be watching me, but I've got a God that been watching out for me every time I stumbled he picked me up and turned me around and 
place my feet on the solid ground. Can I go higher? Had Paul not fallen from that horse, Paul would have never reminded us that I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. Had it never been knocked down, he would never have given us the knowledge that no matter what comes, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Can I go higher? Somebody in here ought to live one hand and say I'm a witness that God can do what no other power can do. So can I get one witness while folk are watching you, while somebody's watching out for you, you ought to watch God work it out for you. Somebody ought to say thank you. I said thank you, Jesus that I should have been dead sleeping in my grave but God made a way out of no way I should have lost everything in this pandemic but I I have a God that's been watching out for me can I go higher because I feel like preaching I should have lost my mind you should have lost your job but because God was watching out while you were laid out God was laying out a plan so you could get back up and you can have greater after the struggle can I go higher somebody ought to tell God thank you that while others were watching God didn't let me die but he let my enemies stay around long enough to see my setback was a setup for my comeback can I go higher can I get one more witness to live your hands and tell God thank you I said tell them thank you through the storms and through the rain through sickness and through my pain because I've been watching God I can depend on God can I go higher but the question is can God depend on you to give him a praise can God depend on you at your lowest point to say I I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, Elder Cain, because I'm going to keep on preaching. But can I go higher? You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I'm a witness. I'm a witness that I should have been dead in 2002 after a truck accident. But I'm here. I may have some scars, but I'm here. I may have issues with my mind, with my back, with my knees, but I'm here. Can I get a witness that'll say through me? Dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come towards grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Can I ask you one question? Ain't he all right? I said, Ain't he all right? Yes, I said, Yes.
Supper Church are open at this time. You can come by um, candidate for baptism. You can come by Christian experience. You can also come by watch care, meaning if you're in a, a vicinity for a short time, you can come and still be a part of this church. Would you come? At this time, we know that we can't come to the altar. But those that are at home, just come. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for who you are. Dear Lord, we, we thank you for just seeing who we are. Dear Lord, thank you for seeing me. Thank you for blessing us, Father. Dear Lord, right now we ask that you bless our pastor and restore into him what he has poured out to us. Dear Lord, we ask that you go to those that are in the homes, those that are in the hospital, those that just need you, Lord. Just come into their hearts right now in the mighty name of Jesus. This we ask in your precious and righteous name. We do pray. Amen. of the believer that we are there for each other we need each other to survive and even as a ministry in West Durham we need you to help us as we continue to be consistent in our tithes and offerings so that we can continue to do the work of the church part of, of, of what we do is that we ensure that the Central Children's Home and Lot Carrier Home and Foreign Missions and the missions work of the General Baptist State Convention and all of these arms, missionary work, the Durham Missionary uh, 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 Union, they're budgeted, watch this, through your tithes and offerings. It's not just about paying people and doing stuff, it's about the missional work of the church and your giving, your consistency and faithfulness in your tithes and offerings helps us be a witness as a body of believers. You'll see on your screen three ways that you can give as we are away from this sanctuary. You can give online, you can give through your mobile app, you can give by mail. As it's right there, pray, be led of God for how you can be consistent in your tithes and in your offering. Listen, I don't often say this, but maybe you watch us consistently and you're not a member of West Durham. Won't you pray today about a gift to this church? If you have been coming, you've been blessed by this ministry. Won't you allow the Lord to speak a blessing to you that you might be a blessing to what we're doing? 
So like Paul was going to all those, Saul, and that word going to all those, that this word can go abroad. And we thank God for what God has done. We pray that you have been safe during this inclement weather weekend. And we know that God is able. We're prepared now for our threefold amen. And this blessing and benediction. Until we prepare to meet again on next Sunday. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your going and in your coming. So I speak the blessing of the Lord into your life and declare that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and no longer the borrower. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ, may the rest rule and abide both now, henceforth, and forever, and ever, and evermore.